Hello and welcome to Greg's Game Room. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to beat what is often considered the worst game for the Atari 2600, E.T. The Extraterrestrial. Honestly, E.T. isn't all that bad of a game, and I think it's so maligned because it's not the standard pick-up-and-play type game like Space Invaders, Asteroids, or Missile Command. In E.T., you need to understand how the game works, and that requires that you read the manual. So I'm going to read the manual real quick, and then show you how to beat Game 3, which is the easiest, and Game 1, which is the hardest. Now, if you want to skip ahead, there are chapters down below. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at the E.T. manual. First of all, I noticed that they included this little um, getting started guide here. It tells me that Atari knew that this was a hard game and they knew that uh, people would get uh, frustrated. So let's take a look at this real quick. How to control E.T. Levitating out of wells. Calling the ship. And on the back is start with game three, which is the easiest. Alright, so let's take a look at the actual manual. Get this, get this out of here. We're going to go with the real, the real stuff here. Got your table of contents. You got your uh, ET going up for a layup there. I don't know. Kind of looked like he was playing basketball to me. You got your little uh, story introduction there. If you want to read the whole thing, you know, pause the video or, you know, look up the manual online. Okay, so the mission is to find the three phone pieces, find the call zone, and then find the landing zone. On the screen there, you're going to see these little spots here. Those are the pits or the wells in this case. If you see a little flashing light, then that's where a phone piece is. I'll show you how to get to that later. This is a candy piece, this little dot right there. Uh, this is the number of candy pieces that you have. And this is the energy that you have left. A round will end when E.T. boards the spacecraft. At the end of each round, all your bonus points are displayed. If you want to play another round, simply press the controller button. A game also ends when E.T. runs out of energy or when you decide to quit playing. <laughs> so here's the diagram of a pit. And then here is Elliot's house, the FBI building, and the scientist's building. So nice that they're conveniently located right next to each other. And there's the scientist, there's the FBI guy, and of course there's Elliot right there. Oh yeah, and E.T. As you travel around the map looking for the phone pieces, and you're going to find little power zones. There's an indicator right here. If you see a question mark and you hit the button, E.T. will stretch out his neck and a little flashing light might appear in one of the pits. That's what that little flashing light indicator is there on this screen. If you see this icon that looks like a Roman numeral three, that is to send the scientists and the FBI guys back to their home base, which will send them back to either the scientist building or the FBI building. If you see this icon, then that means that E.T. can eat a candy piece and get some energy back. If you see this icon, that will call Elliot to come rescue you. And then he actually takes all your candy pieces, <laughs> which I don't think is cool. But I think that's for extra bonus points later. One of the things I discovered is that if you have Elliot on the screen with you, then the scientist or the FBI guy cannot also appear on the screen. So it would be nice if Elliot would just kind of follow me the whole, the whole game. And then if you see an arrow, then that means it will automatically jump you to that particular screen either upwards or left ways or down ways or right ways and then this little icon here is the call the ship zone this is the hardest icon to find in the whole game so what I've been doing is looking for that first it uh, it makes it easier a little bit when the FBI guy is chasing you down so yeah when you find this zone and you have the phone then you're gonna hit the button and it will actually call your friends to come rescue you at which point you need to get back to the forest and find the landing zone, which is in the forest. It's always going to be in that forest screen like this right here. And all you have to do is be standing on it right as the clock counts down and the aliens or I guess your friends will come and rescue you. So the FBI guy is probably the most annoying character in the game. If he catches you, he will take away a phone piece. And if you don't have any phone pieces, he will take all your candy. And that's pretty much all he does. It's very annoying. Of course, now you got to go look for those phone pieces again. And of course, the way to find those phone pieces is to look for that phone piece zone question mark there. And then you'll be on a pit stage like this and you're going to find that little flashing light and then you'll jump into the pit to find the phone piece. Sometimes instead of a phone piece, you'll find a flower. Now what that means is that basically you have three chances to get E.T. home if you were to die. What happens uh, if you run out of energy is that Elliot will come and rescue you and give you 1500 energy back. But he'll only do it three times. But if you find the flower, he'll do it a fourth time for you. So E.T. uses energy when he seeks phone pieces, executes special powers, that's by pushing the uh, the action button, or the fire button, I guess. 
or when he's escaping from dangerous humans. Now, if you press down on the fire button while E.T. is moving, he'll run a lot faster, and that helps you get away from the FBI guys, but it also helps you find the different zones faster, but it also uses energy faster. So I don't know if I mentioned, in order to use any of these zones, basically you just stand on it and you press the fire button, and then E.T. will like stretch his neck out, and that activity from that zone will actually be performed. So there are three different game variations. There's game one, which is the hardest, which is probably why so many people played this game and just gave up on it because it was the most difficult. They really should have tried game three, which is the easiest because there are no humans in it besides Elliot. Or game two, which only the FBI agent is in it and not the scientist. Now, honestly, I think the scientist is easier to deal with than the FBI agent because all the scientist does is take you back to his uh, laboratory. He doesn't steal any of your phone pieces, whereas the FBI guy will steal your phone parts and it makes it much more difficult to uh, find them again. So anyway, game one has both the scientist and the FBI guy. Game two only has the FBI guy and game three only has Elliot. Now there are some difficulty switches on here. If you leave them in the B position, it's slightly easier. The right difficulty switch means that the humans will be either faster or slower. Of course, A is going to be faster, B will be slower. The left difficulty switch means that in the A position, Elliot cannot be in the landing field when the rescue ship arrives. Or in the B position, it's okay for Elliot to be there. Frankly, of all the games I've played, Elliot's never been in the landing zone, so that hasn't really made much of a difference. And then scoring, to me, the scoring is really not that big of a deal, but I thought it was kind of interesting. The, the, the points that you get is kind of funny. 490 points for a candy piece carried onto the rescue ship, uh, or a candy piece given to Elliot is 770, or a candy piece after the 31st piece is 1,000. That's also an interesting point. I notice it says right here there's a penalty. After E.T. collects 31 candy pieces, he loses 700 energy units for each new candy piece he picks up. That's not cool. You lose energy if you gain more than 31 candy pieces. And then here's some helpful hints. One of them is to use the wells as escape zones from the scientist and the FBI guy. This one says, since you can only have one human on the screen at once, it's better to have the scientist kidnap E.T., than the uh, FBI guy. Number three here says to give Elliot as many candy pieces as possible. Honestly, I think that's a bad idea because I like to use the candy pieces as, uh, as energy because I'm always running out of energy. Number four says you can actually pause the game by falling into a well and just standing there. You're not gonna lose any energy since there's no pause button on an Atari 2600. And number five says sometimes ET will fall back into a well after he has levitated up to the planet's surface. To prevent this, move E.T. right or left immediately after the scene changes from the well interior to the planet's surface. E.T. will move from the well onto solid ground in the same direction you move your joystick. Basically what I do is I hold down the button after E.T. is on the surface and then I make sure that his feet are touching the, the ground and not in the, in the pit. All right, now that we've read the manual, let's go ahead and give this a playthrough. I will show you how to beat E.T. Alright, so we're in the forest. The first thing I'm going to do is look for the landing zone, which I think I was already on it, right there in the middle. Alright, next we'll go to the left over here. Now, if you continue to go left or right, you will just stay in the forest looking for pits. If you go up, then you are going to go back to the forest. If you go down from here, you're going to go into Elliot's uh, area. Well, that's Elliot's house. And the, uh, that's the the scientist or the FBI guy and then this is the scientist guy so if we go up we'll go back into the pit zone and what we're looking for right off the bat is the uh, the call my friend zone and the arrows always bug the heck out of me I wish they wouldn't I wish they weren't there at all but they are now notice the icon at the top there how it changes as I stand over different areas now we don't have to worry about this one at the moment because um, there's no scientist or FBI guys chasing us. Oh, okay, well I lucked into finding a piece right here. Found my first phone piece. And I fell in the pit again because I wasn't holding the button down. If I hold it down as I come out of the pit, we can still float for a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna zip around to the next screen here and see if I can find up oh, there it is there's the landing zone notice the little icon at the top change to the alien guy so it's on this screen with the two um, the two carrot symbols I guess uh, let's see if we can find the question mark up oh, there's the question mark and there's no phone pieces here and yes that's my bird squawking next to me here all right 
let's see if we can find, oh, there's the question mark. Oh, there's the phone piece down there. I got a Reese's Pieces. We're gonna jump in, save ET before it hits the ground. And I got the other phone piece there. We'll float out of here. There's only gonna be one phone piece on each screen, so we can go ahead and move on to the next screen, see if we can find another phone piece here. See if we can find that question mark. I'm not seeing the question marks. I'm gonna go ahead and eat a few uh, pieces of candy here to build up my energy. I'm not seeing the question mark on this screen. Of course, the other way to do it is just to fall on all the pits, but that kind of sucks. Oh, did I miss it? No. Oh, I just called Elliot by accident. <laughs> oh, there's the question mark, okay. Anything in here? Nope. Hey, Elliot, what's up? Don't take my, no, oh, don't take my candy. Oh. I already know there's nothing here. Oh, fell into a pit by accident. What we'll do is we'll float up and just keep floating. And now we're touching the regular ground or we should be good. Anything here? Nope, nothing here. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh man. That's why I wish those little arrows were not in the game because it just messes me up all the time. I didn't really want to jump to another screen. So the way to avoid that is to be moving before you push the button. All right, I can't remember which screens I've already been to. Got to find that last phone piece. And if you can catch yourself before you get to the bottom of the pit, E2 won't lose as much energy. The other way to do it is if you get um, nine candy pieces. Seeing how I can't find that last phone piece. If you get nine candy pieces and call Elliot, he will bring you the last piece of your phone. Elliot. Elliot. There it is. Okay. So hopefully Elliot will be giving me the phone piece. And he didn't. What a what a rude kid. Oh, there we go. He gave me the phone piece. Okay, good. All right, so now we just got to find that uh, alien call zone again. Of course, the E.T. is not an alien. It's uh, his buddies. I don't remember it was on this screen here somewhere. Unfortunately, it is the hardest thing to find in this whole game. I wish there was an easier way to find the alien call zone. There it is right there. So we can hit the call zone. And then what I like to do is just go back to the forest and find the uh, the landing zone, which I think is right here in the middle. Yep, we'll just stand here and wait. And there we go, we saved ET. It's not really that hard of a game. Alright, now here's a game that I played earlier. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look in the forest and see if I can find a landing zone. Here it is in the top left. And now I'm going to search around for the call zone before I find the phone pieces because if the FBI guy catches you, he's going to take your phone pieces and it's going to make it more difficult to, uh, to get out of there. So my strategy is to find the alien call zone first, then collect all of the phone pieces, make the call real quick, and then try to get out. So this is me looking for the alien call zone. It's the hardest thing to do in this game, honestly. I can deal with the pits. It's trying to find that stupid alien call zone. It's the hard part. Oh, there it is right there. And I don't care if the scientist guy gets me. It's fine. Oh, we're kind of stuck there. And then we got the uh, phone piece right there. Now we're going to have to quickly see if we can't find the other phone pieces. Get away from me, FBI guy. I was trying to use the, uh, the, the send him home icon there. Anything here? Oh, there it is right there, but he's right in my way, so I gotta go around. 
Oh, I fell in a pit there, dang it. Alright, see if we can get up there really quick before- Oh, Just barely touched it. I think we can get there before the FBI guy gets us. Alright, there we go. Second phone piece. He's gonna be waiting for me when I get out of the pit, though. Oh, now it's a scientist guy now. Where is that dang question mark? Oh man, that stupid FBI guy. Oh, we found the flower. So, the flower will give you an extra chance if you were to die. Elliot will come back and save you three times, but if you find the flower and revive it, he'll come and save you a fourth time. If you need it. Oh, I just chased Elliot away. <laughs> oh, I just traded Elliot for the FBI guy. Get away from me, FBI guy. See, that's what that little uh, Roman numeral three thing does, is it chases them away, makes them go home. And I'm sure that these zones were created because the 2600 only has one button. I don't know how else you would do it unless you had zones like this. I mean, you'd have to have multiple buttons. See, that stupid scientist has taken me back to his scientific laboratory, but at least he doesn't take one of my phone pieces like the stupid FBI guy does. I gotta eat some candy. Oof, almost out of energy there. He walks as slow as he possibly can, too. Ah, oh, we got lucky. There it is. Still got to find that other one. Nope. See, it's hard for me to remember which stages I've already been on and, and gotten the pieces from. And I always just travel left to right when going through these pit areas. Because if you think of it as like a cube, you're kind of going around the cube and it's looping around, right? If you go up, then you're going to the forest. If you go down, then you're going back to Elliot's house. If I would make a suggestion to make this game a little bit easier, um, I would say don't have the FBI guy and the scientist guy appear within two seconds of me showing up on these screens. It makes it so hard. You know, give me a little time to, to look for the parts that I need instead of being constantly hounded by these, these guys. Oh, there it is. It's okay if he touches me because he, he won't take my phone parts, but... Oh crap, there's the FBI guy. Ugh, I'm almost out of energy here. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. Walking really slow, hoping that... Oh, go away. Okay, now I have to... Oh, come on. These guys cannot be on the screen when I call my friends. Okay, there we go. Now what I like to do is just stand right here and wait at that spot where they'll, it'll send them home if they were to show up again. Oh, and I just died. Okay, hopefully Elliot can revive me before my ship gets here. Okay, good. And I'm just going to stand right here and just keep hitting the button and chasing them away until my ship gets here. And then when it gets close to time, I'm going to jump up into the forest and get under the landing zone. Okay, let's go find that landing zone. Where is it? Okay, there it is. Woo! Got out of there. And that's how you beat it on the hardest difficulty. It is it is very challenging, uh, especially because those guys are always hounding you. Okay, well, there you have it. I hope that this video helps you beat E.T., or should I say, save E.T. It's not really that bad of a game if you understand what you're doing. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Take care, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, everyone.